All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to today's, or welcome back to the channel and to today's video. The world of football and indeed Chelsea Football Club keeps turning. And after a convincing 3-0 win against Burnley at home yesterday with a Reese James masterclass, might I add, the world is taking notice of the young English right back more and more of late. Things are progressing generally. Obviously, you would have noticed Giroud being left out of the squad and not playing. We all know what's happening there. A bit more on that in a moment. Chelsea have made their first signing of the transfer window. Exciting yet underwhelming, but we'll get into that. It actually is a really good signing. And could the 50 million pound man be Lewis Dunk that was rumoured? Probably not. That sort of uh, rumour that came out of Sky Sports was said to be a young player from a Premier League rival, not a 28 year old from a team battling at the lower echelons of the Premier League. But still, I have a few things to say about Lewis Dunk myself. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, click the bell on the notifications icon. Why not like the video to help me out and go subscribe to my other channel. If you want a little bit more Jan Unplugged. Link in the top of the description. Let's start with Chelsea's new signing. A number nine, a centre forward, a 16 year old from Norway. Hold please. Chelsea have completed the signing of 16 year old Norwegian wonder kid, Brian Fiabima or Fiabema, whatever. Yes, it's underwhelming in the sense of this kid's not gonna jump into the first team and be amazing all of a sudden, cause he's 16, but this kid is incredibly highly rated around Europe and apparently it's a bit of a coup that Chelsea have secured his signature. Now, 16 going on 17, who knows, 17 going on 18 could be included in the first team squad. We all know the inclinations of Frank Lampard, Jody Morris and Joe Edwards, if they see a kid doing the business in the development squad, they might sit him on the bench in a cup game, and who knows, by the time he's 18, maybe even 17, he could be in Chelsea's first team. A lot of rhyming there. So Chelsea's first signing of the window isn't a Galactico, but pictures of him holding up the number nine shirt for you know the under 18s, posing with Frank Lampard and Callum Hudson-Odoi on the match day against Burnley. It's a positive thing. It's just not what certain Chelsea fans want right now in terms of strengthening the starting 11 or indeed just the first team squad. But good news is good news. And if Frank Lampard and the rest of Chelsea are hyped on this kid, I think Chelsea fans could probably see a little bit of him in not too long. Right, with one confirmed incoming player into Chelsea Football Club, let's talk about inevitable exit. Olivier Giroud, World Cup winner, a bit of a cult hero for Chelsea, I've always maintained after we won the FA Cup and Europa League with Chelsea as the top scorer, and obviously did a few bits in the Premier League, linking up with Eden Hazard as well. You know, he's had a great time at Chelsea. He's pretty much gone and he's gonna go to Inter Milan, it looks like. Sky Sports reported on this, one moment please. So, officials from Syria met with uh, Giroud's agents in talks last week, we all know that. I think even Frank Lampard sort of admitted, yes, everyone knows what's going on here. Guy in Italy reported on Friday that Giroud, whose deal expires this summer, has agreed a two and a half year contract with Inter Milan, which considering his age, that's a that's a touch for Giroud in Italy. I know people say players play for longer in Italy and you know older players do better in Serie A, but still, two and a half years, I'm sure he's very happy with that. And definitely will still lead the line this summer for France. Everybody wins. When it comes to negotiations, there is less than one million pounds or one million euros between Chelsea's request and Inter's offer. The Blues have asked for 4.3 million plus 850,000. Now Sky reported this, I don't know what it means plus that. Basically, they've asked for just over 5 million in all, while Inter have offered 3.4 million plus this 850,000, which I do not understand how that works at all. Great news reporting from me, eh? <laughs> the point being here, they're very, very close to agreeing a deal and it does look like it's going to happen. For me, for six months left on this contract for a guy's 33, Getting anything out of it is really, really good. Chelsea often do really well in these deals. Marina Granovskaya masterclass, I guess, squeezing money out of players that you never thought you were going to get money from. I'm not going to run for it now, but there's actually countless um, examples of when Chelsea have made loads of money back off certain. I mean, Morata and Costa recently, when the how we made over 50 million each on those players, considering the circumstances is mental. So Giroud's on his way out, it's gonna happen. Conte gets his rotational striker, the Europa League specialist, remember, Conte's in the Europa League now with Inter Milan. 
he's sorted really it makes sense Giroud gets his time Chelsea are going to be maybe short for strikers and actually in the news as well Michy Batshuayi has been rumoured for a Chelsea exit also now I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is very much a rumour I understand why people want Batshuayi apparently Villa really want him you'd understand that he's a good finisher they need a striker there's the John Terry connection and he's been heavily heavily linked with a move back to Palace where he enjoyed a really successful loan spell in uh, Croydon. <laughs> the thing is, Batshuayi likes being a second striker. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He's happy at Chelsea. He told a Belgian publication recently, Michy, that, look man, I've never really been the main guy. I've always been the second striker and I'm happy with that. And I'm happy doing that at Chelsea. I love Chelsea. I want to stay here. Dude's happy. He likes living in London. He likes pretty much the setup, what he's getting paid, his role. So I understand why I wouldn't want that to change, but Chelsea need to get a little bit more out of him, and you kind of need your second striker to be as nice as that is for Batshuayi. It's a little bit passive. You want your second striker to really be knocking on the door of the first, Tammy Abraham in this, in this case, and putting the pressure on. Now, Tammy scored again yesterday. He's been performing well, but, you know, I'm just saying it doesn't hurt to have a second striker that really keeps the first on their toes and also is really, really effective when they come on. And Mishy's kind of been in frustrating form of late. So we'll see what happens with the strikers. Right, now, Lewis Dunk, £50 million. Pounds. Let's talk about it. <laughs> All you guys, it might sound mental. And it's a lot of money. It is. It's a lot of money. But let me play devil's advocate here. To be honest, this story came out today and I've kind of looked at it and said, shall I talk about this? Shall I report on it? But I'm kind of inclined to do so because I am a massive Lewis Dunk fan and have been for a long time as a bit of a football stats nerd. When Leicester City sold Harry Maguire to Manchester United for, was it, 85 million pounds? Sure, things worked out great with Soyuncu, but I was saying the first thing they should have done is get Lewis Dunk. Instead, they tried to buy Nathan Ake and they got quoted 75 million pounds. Now, obviously that was ridiculous. I'm not saying they should have tried to buy Dunk immediately for 50, but they should maybe have offered 30, 40 million for Lewis Dunk. His numbers are incredible and how he hadn't got a call up for England the last couple of international breaks, to me, is mental. Lewis Dunk is 28 years old. Sure, he's not young, but he's got the leadership qualities to command a back line. He knows English football absolutely backwards. He's no mug, he doesn't fall for any tricks, and he's a very, very good footballer. Dunk is one of those centre-backs that have done loads of clutch performances where his metrics in a certain game are just like astronomical like you know you just won't get past him kind of like shades of john terry some you know from days past he's good on the ball with both feet he's good in the air he's like i said he's savvy he understands english football but you can't get past him a lot of the time he's very very good defensively and although 50 million sounds insane probably is pretty crazy I personally understand why another Premier League team would be quoted that for Lewis Dunk in this current market's climate. Now, should Chelsea buy him? Probably not. I wanted to talk about him because I'm a super fan, and if Chelsea did somehow wound up with Lewis Dunk, if there was something behind these rumours, I wouldn't be all that mad. He brings a seniority to the back line, which Chelsea often are lacking. He's a very, very good defender, and Chelsea would just be awesome with him in the back line, personally. Now, again, I'm not one of these people that criticise Chelsea centre-backs massively. I think Christensen was very good. Every single, well, all four of Chelsea centre-backs are all talented. Rudiger, Zuma, Tomori, Christensen, all good centre-backs. None, none of them are bad, literally. They're all Premier League quality centre-backs. Now, you can't say that for other top six clubs. They have centre-backs in there that probably aren't Premier League quality or anywhere near the quality they'd want. Chelsea have quality at centre-back. So really, it's probably not a priority position. I know everyone's saying, oh, Chelsea need to get a centre-half in, Chelsea need to get a centre-half in. But really, let's be honest, it's a left-back and it's an attacker and maybe a backup striker, in my opinion. But Lewis Dunk, 50 million, it won't be the, this 50 million secret link of a young player. But still, I wouldn't be really, really mad at that because I think Lewis Dunk's an amazing player. I know this is my sort of nerd stats bias coming in, but I just thought it was a funny thing to report on and talk about. Anyway, I want to hear what you guys think about this situation. How would you reflect on Giroud's time at Chelsea? Because it does look like he's out the door. Do you think Michy Batshuayi is good enough to be the only backup behind Tammy Abraham to see us out to the end of the season? Would you welcome someone like Lewis Dunk into the club? Just forget about the price tag for the moment. A senior centre-back that's very, very talented, good numbers experience, or do you just think, no, Jan, I don't want that? <laughs> 
let me know in the comments below. Um, remember, please do go check out the second channel, Yan's Yard. I've got new artwork on there and I'm trying to upload most days and it's a little bit more chill than football therapy and you might enjoy it. So go check out Yan's Yard click the link in the top of the description. And of course, if you've not yet subscribed to Football Therapy, please do and like the video to help me out. Remember, you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football. I'll keep you updated. Come back every single day. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby